What's the menu? Quit. Oh, wait. Begin the game. Normal. I think this should be right. Just see if it starts the intro. If it doesn't, then we'll quit again. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job nice was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on the keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day, of every month, of every year. And although others might have considered it soul winding, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. But somehow I think Stanley's not going day, to stay. Something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened. This complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. <coughs> Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. Uh, out of my office. The other one, the other one steers your head. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. So you kind of have to use the other one to look around. You don't need the buttons much. <laughs> Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Would you be more comfortable with mouse and keyboard? Mm, that's fine. Okay. <clears throat> Good to know. How do I open the door? Oh, it'd be like that. Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this, what dark secret was being held from him. What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number. Two, eight, four, five. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. Huh? 
Stanley just sat around twiddling his thumbs. Trying to input anything on the device was useless, since he could never possibly know that the combination was 2, 8, Ooh, or 5. Shit. How do I correct it? I guess I start over again. 2, 8, 4, 5. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying. <clears throat> Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. Push it right. <laughs> Descending deeper into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Subtle. <laughs> the lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. <coughs> What horrible secret did this place hold, Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? Panopticon, like a like a like a tower in a prison that looked where you can look around in all directions. That's a great word. <laughs> That's where I came from. Mm Read that? Yeah. Working on it. Gotta push the big what, the big light button. You already did? Did I? Yeah. Lights are kind of puzzled. No. Now the monitors jump to life, their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building, Stanley's co workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen. 
and Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. Until that none of them are there. This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe it couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? Probably. No. He refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never. It was unthinkable. Wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? But here was the proof, the heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions, happy or sad or content, walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he would dismantle the controls once and for all. Mm -hmm. Bleep. I like I just my boy. What? The coffee mug. It said <clears throat> what? The subject is reading the coffee mug. I like work. I just love my boy <laughs> or something. <laughs> Gonna give my cancer cancer? Maybe. Radioac radioactive uh lasers? Oh, is that what they are? I don't know. That's what I assume they are. Mind control offline. Why is the mind control offline? Five. I found one of the two and five. Blue and red buttons. <laughs> Some kind of ridiculous <coughs> puzzle game. Thank you. <laughs> that was the tip. Just the tip. Karen knows what the tip is. Thank you, fart. No, I still have to <laughs> make noise. <laughs> and when at last he found the source of the room's power.
and a rising chill of uncertainty. Was it over? <clears throat> yes. He had won. He had defeated the machine. Unshackled himself from someone else's command. Freedom was mere moments away. And yet, even as the immense door slowly opened, Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved. Where had his co-workers gone? How had he been freed from the machine's grasp? What other mysteries did this strange building hold? But as sunlight streamed into the chamber, he realized none of this mattered to him. For it was not knowledge or even power that he had been seeking, but happiness. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. No longer so would anyone endings, tell him where to go, if you do what different to do, things. or how to feel. Whatever life he lives, it will be his. And that was all he needed to know. It was, perhaps, the only thing worth knowing. Stanley stepped through the open door. Into King's Quest. Stanley felt the cool breeze upon his skin, the feeling of liberation, the immense possibility of the new path before him. This was exactly the way, right now, that things were meant to happen. And Stanley was happy. So what? It, why, don't, why don't you uh, tell us into the microphone? Why don't you tell us what your thoughts are at this exact moment? Into the microphone. I am not going to have to play this fifty more times to get every possible combination of endings, am I? Because I'm not going to. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it might be good for one more, maybe two if you ask nicely. Sure. But keep going. Let's let's have you let's have you go at least one more time. Just see what happens. Okay. okay. But so far, you're not necessarily enjoying it. Not too much. I think the what could it mean? the the Stanley voiceovers to cute. To the room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. It's different. It gets points for being different. Oh yeah, that's a screen turn. So that's fine. Let's turn the V-sync off. That's all right. We can deal with that. Yeah. Maybe because I spend a frustrating amount of time just trying to get myself physically aligned right. Sure. Are you I sure think you, I'm getting better. you would not prefer a mouse and keyboard? Probably just be just as bad, if not worse. Okay. Do you want to try? No problem. Nope. No. Then, then if you have a control... So then what if I go through the other door? Wait. Open door? This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. I'm sure it's beautiful. Ah, yes, truly a room worth admiring. It's it had really nice. been worth the detour after all. Just to spend it but eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Isn't that the, uh... And so he detoured through the maintenance section, walked straight ahead to the opposite door, and got back on track. <laughs> well, that's amusing. The fact that it won't let you. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. I, I like these these slides. They're they're great. <coughs> experiment is interesting so far. Yielding very interesting results. The, ex <laughs> the experiment. <laughs> Nice to know I'm exhibit uh, number whatever. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. So it farts every time you do something interesting? Or? No, that's from the tips. That's the tips. It makes oh. a fart noise. But Stanley just couldn't do it. 
he considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be okay. fired for that. Well, this and in such a competitive economy, starting to make me why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished. His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all. None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? Why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? <laughs> and for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they simply repeating? No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange. This can't be real. And at last, mm. he came to the conclusion that it right, had been on the top of He just can we, can I take a break? words for it. I'm dreaming! We can. This is all a dream. I think if we take a break, oh. we're just done. What all well, right, yeah, I'll keep going. I'll keep going. I'll finally going. found an answer, an I'm explanation. Going. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. And he thought to himself, I think we have enough data if you do want to, yeah. to, if you do want to, to be done. Yeah. boring real life job pushing buttons. <clears throat> I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. So, he imagined I'm like trapped or something. And began to gently float above the ground. Yeah, enough. Then okay. <laughs> Okay, so what do you think? What, g give us uh, into the microphone. Um, give it, give what, what, what's going on in your it's head? It's interesting. Um, it seems like a lot of the stuff, you, it'd be more interesting if you could interact with all the stuff in the mm -hmm. microphone. Like the, the pop machines and stuff. You know, kind of like Maniac Mansion or something. Mm -hmm. But uh, and it makes me motion, a little motion sick after a while, going around in circles in that section. It's like, Ugh. But, um, yeah. It's, it's cute the way the narrator, like, says stuff when you go the wrong way if that's the wrong way mm -hmm. but i don't know it seems like you'd probably have to spend i mean if that's your thing you know spend like 20 minutes going through each different scenario and seeing what all the results are and and that i'm sure that could be fun but it's, it's just a kind of a lot of work for me to physically navigate it so and basically my hypothesis was correct i i made i made a guess because I know you're more of a casual gamer. Yeah. Um, this game, uh, Stanley Parable, is very highly regarded amongst the gaming community. But my hypothesis that was that you need a solid background in first-person gaming tropes. You need to kind of be a hardcore gamer in order to like think this game is brilliant. Which you know, I do. I think it's brilliant. Rich does. Ha, I'm breaking the narrative. Ha ha. Exactly. Um, no, I think that's neat. But but it's like it's very clear that you're not having a good time. <laughs> and I and I think that has to do with just the kind of games that you play, which is yeah. fine. It's perfectly fine. Well, that's what we wanted you here for is to test my hypothesis. Obviously, our sample size is one. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we're not being super scientific. But we appreciate you helping us out. I, I don't mean to diss, you know, your favorite game. It, it's interesting. It's different. <laughs> I'd probably like sure. to watch Rich do it to show me what the We diss people's are. favorite <laughs> games all the time. <laughs> oh, no, There's it's, nothing wrong with it. And you're not dissing it. Yeah, like, I, I think mm. that's, that's my one criticism of the Stanley Parable is in order to fully enjoy it, you need a whole background of games to play first. <laughs> and so, like, that's, a, to me, a negative of the game. And so you've, okay. you've proven me correct, at least. Are we at all curious what you might think of the beginner's guide? No. Yeah. That's a whole. Di yeah. That's a whole different thing. Uh, beginner's guide to the story. So the game this guy made. Ah. Uh, I mean, it gets it gets points for breaking the fourth wall or whatever. I mean, I'll, I'll give it that for sure. <laughs> well, and I, what I was really curious to was to happen was like when you started down different paths and you got like you you understand the premise perfectly you go down different paths yeah. and he, he tells different stories and you just don't care and i think that's great she f <laughs> first time through just the narrative yep. went straight through yeah. it didn't even think ah, i can go right he said well, left. Well, i'm could, gonna go right but i figured i'd just go ahead and play along 
no, but and by the way, that's what I did my first time playing Stanley Parable too. Really? I just, I just li- well, be- like I just wanted to see, like, oh, I'll just listen to this guy. I knew I could go other ways, but I'll yeah. just listen to him, and it's fine. I think that's fine. It, I guess the problem, my, my first thing, thing I did like, was went right. It's like in order to <laughs> in order to check anything out again, I would have to go through like nineteen steps to get there, mm-hmm. and it's but it I goes pretty quick. Too lazy or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, maneuvering for you is easy for for me with the walls and whatnot, and I hit the wrong button, and it's like sometimes I actually have to think about how to physically get my ass okay. down the wall, oh, yeah, no, and in like, the door, and down the hall. I hope you don't mean like I, I hope no. you don't think like I'm. Oh no, I'm casting anything negative on you. No. I just think you yeah. know, obviously you're a different kind of player, and yeah. I think it's I think it's that that's you you've you've helped us out immensely, and I appreciate that. No problem. Great. Great. I think it's a beginner's guide, not the beginner's guide.